So when you think about root types, um, you know, a lot of times you can categorize these in three different uh, buckets, a fibrous root system, a modified or a coarse root. And a modified is really the best uh, kind of uh, uh, middle of the road, the best of both worlds. But that fibrous root system is going to be more of a shallower root system and maybe move out more, to, um, uh, you know, across the profile. But it seems like some of these hybrids do better, at, not all of them, but a lot of them do better in those poorly drained scenarios. On the flip side, a coarse textured root uh, is going to have a deeper root rooting depth and maybe do a little bit better job in that uh, that uh, drier, or arid, or droughty condition. And then, of course, the modified is right there in the middle. So anyway, Ken, I don't know if you've got any comments on that or if you've done much work with that. We haven't done a lot of work. It does definitely interest me because a um, uh, situation where we focused most of our effort ab above ground right now, and, and as I look at your rooting system um is there key places for instance you know one of the restrictions might be compaction or hard pan um where a grower maybe is a highly erodible but he can't take out a compaction layer due to erosion issues or he's dealing with a very shallow v horizon if i'm looking for depth of root through restrictions is that going to move me to a course uh, looking for a coarse chassis under here or? Or can I can I get there with the modified? Yeah, I think you can get there with the modified, but um, yeah, you know, I guess when we're dealing with um, with compacted soils, um, it, it's tough all the way around. I mean, those root tips when they hit a compacted zone, um, it's just going to stop no matter what. But um, uh, as I look at this, uh, you know, one thing that we have um, uh, really, or we're looking into and we have seen is, uh, you know, root structure certainly makes a difference as we go to strip till. You know, you think about strip till and really tilling that, um, uh, that, that strip down through there and um, which rooting structure is going to take advantage of all the nutrients that are there. Um, you know, right now I'd have to point towards the fibrous or the modified root system that is going to give you better nutrient uptake, number one, and number two, going to give you um, a better standability in those kind of environments as well. But um, anyway, just it's just knowing, I guess, the rest of the story there. So, so Mike, looking at these trials that we have out, we're, uh, we got multiple corn varieties across there and s significant wind damage differences. And for us, the lodging is quite a bit worse in the tilled fields versus the no-till. In the no-till field, we have less lodging, more green snap, uh, plant was anchored better. But when I look through there and I see the lodged corn versus a, a hybrid next to it, not lodge, um, uh, you have my interest now. I'm going to go back and do some digging, or we are going to do some digging. Uh, would you expect those fibrous root systems to be the better standards in these plots that took on the wind? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, I would expect some of the better standards to be some of the, the deeper rooted, uh, coarse textured, or, or modified. Um, sure would. Um, I feel like, um, and especially in those areas that... Um, you know, might have uh, received ample rainfall throughout the season that didn't allow that fibrous root to uh, go deeper or um, get pretty extensive. Um, you know, that significant wind just uh, just blew them right over. It, I, I kind of refer to it as, uh, you know, you get a lot of water in the, in the yard and even a big oak tree sometimes, uh, um, you know, tornadoes or, or you, you referred to the wide leaves. I mean, it's always that summertime, um, you can just literally uproot. And I think sometimes the same thing can happen in that fibrous root system. So, um, yeah, you know, you talk about characteristics, Rhonda, you go to the next slide there and, um, 
course, these pictures, uh, you know, we train our, our sales force and, um, you know, our, our agronomy team on exactly what Ken has, uh, you know, been, been preaching to all of us, whether it's uh, farmers or seed companies, either one. I mean, we, we certainly believe it. And, um, you know, we're, we're trying to um, bring more knowledge uh, to this. These pictures were taken there at our Champaign Research Center just uh, two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. And uh, I think this was June 8th planting. If you're wondering what that June 8th planting looked like uh, a few weeks ago, there it is. But um, upright, semi upright, and horizontal. <clears throat> and definitely, can we got some dry areas here in the state? And as we're out the last few days and in these 90 degree temperatures, um, it's amazing on some of the drier areas how the short statured upright hybrids, how much higher the temperature is. And as you're walking with growers in the field at that time, they start to register oh, I see what you mean. This ground's too light for what I'm trying to do with this hybrid. And just in temperature alone, and then you get in the pickup, go down the road and walk into a different variety and you think, well, man, we must have picked up some rain here, but it's, you actually have the ground covered. And going back to earlier, when we talked about how to evaluate a hybrid plot in the dry areas. It's fun to watch how these race horse, if you want to call it geared to capture sunlight, how much sunlight hits the ground and these eight rows versus the eight rows next to it. And when it's 96 out and we're out of water, uh, that corn will tell you that it doesn't like all that sunlight hitting the ground compared to something that's um, got a leaf orientation that keeps it in the shade longer. 